would feed in your music? I mean, it's it's part of everything. I, I knew I wanted to move to New York City when I was like 16. I grew up in Rochester, and I knew I had to come here. My neighborhoods just change after a couple blocks, and that's what's cool about it and interesting. But then also the ease of, of traversing the different neighborhoods is what makes it beautiful. Um, yeah, it was just all walks of life living here, which kind of just gives you a, a broader perspective of, of what the world is. This is like a place where I used to I used to first practice my dole, really. I'd come outside here because there's nowhere really to hang out. It's just a place to park your car. And we'll walk back over there, but there used to be a bunch of um, gas stations, Punjabi-owned gas stations. So it's kind of fun to uh, just come and jam on the dole and, and hear the folks just yelling up and kind of yelling cheers and encouragement and whatnot. During the rehearsal process, we got comfortable with terms that I was using, such as desert or, or Punjab or spaghetti western. You know, there was certain glossary that I was bringing up wanting us to be in a world. The idea of migration exists as a core element in this, in this project, the Wild Wild East. In the essence, it really stems from my parents' migration. My emulation of sound is, is evoking this landscape of the tar desert of Rajasthan and the migration of my family lineage from Rajasthan, perhaps to Punjab, from Punjab to Delhi, from Delhi to New York. Uh, from Rochester to New York City. So bringing juxtaposition of desert and cityscape and landscape, trying to bring those together somehow in, in sound. I was going for open bass lands, talking about westward expansion, you know, but always going back and forth because this is not the wild, wild west, this is the wild, wild east. I'm trying to connect two things together and having them be one, one world. Recording the rehearsal, here we go. Range is beautiful. Cool. Yeah, it explodes. Magical. Big difference. Yeah. Yeah, that sounded great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just do it even harder. Woo. Growing up, you know, my parents never once told me to stop practicing. <laughs> and I was up in my room, like hitting my drums maybe a couple hours a day. And I think about that and just, you know, how many parents would just be so annoyed with their kid hitting their drum set in their apartment or their house. Um, and my parents never would tell me to stop. You know, I'd just go up in my room, shut the door and just jam out. Hey Joel, hey Joel, I want to switch out a cymbal. 
and uh, see if it's better. All the songs, they all were pretty heavy. Um, when I started the process, my dad had uh, started, uh, started a bad decline in his health. And, you know, I knew, I knew this album was coming from the migration of my parents, but it became more evident to me how much this album means and how much it, it um, yeah, it comes from them. I already sent a clip to my father. He's oh getting my. out of rehab today. Oh my goodness. I sent a clip to him. I was like, we're recording on your banjo today. I can't be there to welcome you back home, but Gray's recording on your banjo. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening back to some of the tracks, Hey Up in the Dill and I Am Made It Jell. Those are two songs that my dad would play growing up on his harmonium and bul bul donang. And my kids like constantly wanted me to keep playing it because they loved Ganavian, Hey Up in the Dill. I couldn't listen to it. I just couldn't listen to it. Emotionally, I started thinking about it and I was like, oh no. Like, is this now always just gonna remind me of what's happening with my father? Um, and I hope it does. <laughs> Yeah. When I write, obviously my influences and experiences are what shape the music. On this first generation child of an immigrant in New York for the last 20 years, playing all different types of music, so something comes out of that. You know, that's all I have to come from. 